co of this. And this video brings me looking at forces and Newton's third law for your A-level math. There are lots and lots of questions in this video. Work through really, really slowly, really, really clearly. So have a go at the ones at the beginning and then skip to the ones at the end if you find them too easy. We're going to have a look at forces and the first thing we need to do is to correctly identify what's happening with the forces. What we want to do is we want to resolve horizontally and vertically. So we'll look at the horizontal forces. We've got 30 newtons to the left, we've got a 50 newtons to the right, and we've got an unnamed force, F, also to the right. We don't know how big that one is. Vertically, we've got uh, going upwards, we've got a 20 newton force downwards, and then another force downwards, which is 30 newtons. So how do we resolve these horizontally and vertically? So first, we're going to write down what we're doing. So we're going to resolve. The first one we'll look at is horizontal, resolving horizontally. And the direction you go in is insane. You would on any kind of pair of axes where positive goes towards the right. So resolving horizontally to the right. So what do we do? Well, we say on the left, we've got 30 newtons. And on the right, we've got... 50 newtons and we've got f newtons and an important phrase here is these objects are in equilibrium that means that nothing's really changing with the forces now this force is at rest so that means is that these forces are not making the object move therefore the forces to the left to the right must be equal because if they weren't equal then the object will start to move to whichever direction has a higher force now, what we want to do when resolving this is we want to move everything over to the positive side, to the right-hand side. So what we do is say, well, we've got an F on the right-hand side. We've got a 50 on the right-hand side. And just like solving an equation, what we're going to do is we're going to take 30 newtons away from both sides to move it over to the right. So we're taking away 30 newtons. And then we say it's equal to zero. Now, obviously, I've written this on the left-hand side, but these are all the things for the right-hand side. It's 50 newtons there, it's still positive. The F's there, it's still positive. I've moved the 30 newtons over. When I've written it down, I've just written everything collected on the left-hand side, so I've just kind of swapped around the two sides. You'll also notice I haven't added together the 50 newtons and the 30 newtons, which would give us 20 newtons overall because they've been taken away. Because what resolving is, is it's showing all the individual forces. Let's have another go by resolving vertically, but it's resolving the positive direction, which is going to be upwards. And again, any kind of set of axes you get, when you go up, you get more positive. So what do we have in the positive direction? We've got the R, and what we have in the negative direction, we've got the 20N and the 30N. So you can see that R is equal to 20 newtons plus 30 newtons. So we've got R is the top, 20 plus 30 is the bottom, and we'll make them equal to each other because, again, these objects are in equilibrium. And if the forces weren't equal, let's say that R was larger, then the object would start to lift off the ground. Now I'll just collect them all on one side, collect them on the positive side, that's the R. So we're going to take away the other side to move them over. So we take away the 30 and take away the 20 and make it equal to zero. So by resolving, all we're doing really is forming an equation that shows what's happening with the forces, then we move all the forces over to one side and make it equal to zero, which is then going to make future steps using this concept easier. Because we get up to the harder questions, we'll be using this with then maths happening afterwards. So let's try the same thing for the next question. When we resolve horizontally, we're going to look at the horizontal forces. We've got 70 newtons to the left, P newtons to the right, we don't know what that is, and we've got 40 newtons to the right. Then vertically, we've got 70 newtons upwards, 70 newtons downwards, and then W newtons downwards as well. The objects are in equilibrium. Now this object is traveling downwards at four meters per second. Now that might make you think that, well, it's traveling downwards, the lower forces must be larger, but that's not true. The forces only change what's happening to the object. So with this current set of forces, it's traveling down at four meters per second, and that's not changing. If the speed isn't changing, it means all the forces are balanced. 
if it was speeding up, they would be given extra information. If it was speeding up and going downwards, then what would happen is, yes, the downward forces would be larger. But if it stayed at the same speed, then it's going to be the same as the previous question. So first, let's resolve horizontally in the positive direction horizontally. So we have on the left-hand side, we've got 70 newtons and we've got P. On the right-hand side, we've got 40 newtons and they're going to be equal to each other. If they weren't equal, it will start going to the left or right. We'll move it all over to the positive side and the positive side is the 40 newtons. So we have to take away the 70 newtons and take away P to make it equal to zero. Next, we're going to resolve vertically. Notice I'm just using arrows to show that rather than writing out the whole word. So going up, we've got 70 newtons. Going down, we've got 70 newtons and W newtons, whatever W is, we don't know what it is yet. And these need to be equal to each other. So now let's bring it all over to the positive side, which is 70 newtons. So we need to take away 70 newtons and we need to take away W and it's all going to equal zero. What you might have noticed here is, if you actually work this out, 70 newtons take away 70 newtons is zero. That means that the force W must be zero, which means that this force isn't active at the moment. So let's look at one more example. So again, we've got horizontal forces, 30 newtons to the left, 60 newtons to the left, and F newtons to the right. We've got the vertical forces, 10 newtons up, and W newtons down, and we've also got 70 newtons down. The object is in equilibrium, so although the object is travelling upwards at 1 metres per second, that's a constant speed, so all the forces must be balanced. If it was in equilibrium, then it's going to be either slowing down or speeding up, and then the forces could be out of balance. So first, let's resolve horizontally. So we have 30 newtons and 60 newtons on the left, and we've got F newtons on the right. We'll move it all over to the positive side. The F is on the positive side. So we need to take away the 30 newtons and the 60 newtons to make sure on that side you only have zero left over. Then we resolve vertically. So we have 10 newtons going up and that's equal to W newtons plus 70 newtons. So again, we collect it all on the positive side, which is going up, which is 10 newtons. So we've got 10 newtons, take away 70 newtons, take away W, is equal to zero. So now we can write out the forces, we can resolve the forces. We want to start doing some maths with them. So again, in this question, we've got our horizontal forces, we are F to the left, and we've got 50 newtons to the right. So what we can do is we can resolve it, which would be F is equal to 50 newtons, and then we want to solve it as an equation. And actually, it's already solved for us. F must be equal to 50 newtons. You've got 50 newtons to the left and the right, then that keeps the object in balance. Next, we're going to resolve vertically. So that's R newtons is equal to 10 newtons plus 60 newtons. We can resolve it and move it all over to the same side. R is the positive side, so we need to take away the 10 newtons and the 6 newtons to get zero. Now, if we want to find out what R is, that means R take away 70 newtons is equal to zero. So R must be equal to 70 newtons for this question. Because 70 take away 70 is going to give us the zero. So we can discover the values of our missing forces, R and F, by solving the equations for them. So R is 70 newtons and F is 50 newtons. So try again the next question. We've got our horizontal forces. We've got our vertical forces. It doesn't say it's in equilibrium, but we know it's traveling upwards at three meters per second, and we're not given any sort of acceleration. So it's not accelerating, which will be meters per second squared. Then we know it's going to be in equilibrium. So let's resolve horizontally. That means that F is going to be equal to 60 newtons plus 30 newtons. So there's two paths we can take here. We can resolve it where it's going to be F take away 60 newtons, take away 30 newtons, equals zero. Or we can actually solve the equation. We can actually say, well, okay, 60 newtons plus 30 newtons is 90 newtons, so we have F equals 90. So there's two routes you can take. You can actually show all the routes individually, which we did in the second line, or you can show all the forces uh, as a kind of solved equation, and then you know what F is. So F 
is 90 newtons. Let's do the same thing vertically. So we have 90 newtons is equal to W newtons plus 40 newtons. So again, two things you can do. The first thing is resolve it. Take the positive side and take away the things on the other side. Make it equal to zero. The other thing you can do is try and solve the equation. Now, if you do this one in our head, we see that W must be 50 because 50 newtons plus 40 newtons will give us the 90 newtons. For the medium questions, we've got two forces acting on an object. And this time, rather than a diagram, they've been written out using some other notation. So we've got 70i minus 90j newtons, and we've got 20i plus 80j newtons. So what do these mean? Well, the i's represent horizontal. So 70i and 20i are horizontal numbers. So these two forces, if we've got 70i and we've got 20i acting on an object, then all together we've got 90i, which is pretty simple. Again, this is going in this direction. It's positive and it's horizontal. So a positive value of i is going to go to the right. Negative value of i would go to the left instead. Then we've got the j values, we've got negative 90j and positive 80j. So we do the same math with those. So negative 90 plus a positive 80. All together, that will give us a negative 10j. So j means it's uh, vertical, and negative means it's going to be going down. So again, the positive and negatives is the same as what you see on a graph. You're going down on the y-axis, you're going down towards negative numbers. So a positive j would be going upwards. As you can see, the answers to these aren't zero. That means that these forces are going to make this object move. So this object would move in towards the right and it would move in downwards. And you also notice the force is separated into two parts. We've got the I part of the force, which is going across, and we've got the J part of the force, which is going down. Now, one thing you can do is find the resultant force. The resultant force isn't a force that's separated into horizontal and vertical types. It's just the kind of total force going in one direction. So we need to find the resultant. Now, the way to find the resultant is, you'll notice that these form a triangle, and horizontal and vertical will form a right angle triangle. So by using Pythagoras' theorem, we can actually find the kind of magnitude of this force, the kind of length of the force. That's the first thing that we'll do. So Pythagoras' theorem, we've got 90i, so we're going to square that. We've got negative 10j, so we'll square that. You'll notice I'm not bothering to write negative 10 because we're squaring negative to get a positive anyway. And then we need to square root our answer for Pythagoras theorem. So we can type that into our calculator, 90 squared plus 10 squared, square root the answer, and that's giving us 90 point. We're going to think about the decimal places that we are going to use here. So let's go for one decimal place. So let's say 90.6 newtons for the total force. And you'll notice that if an object's going 90 newtons to the right and 10 newtons down, then it's not going 100 newtons altogether. It's going 90.6 newtons altogether. The next thing is we want the direction of the force. So we want the angle that it's going at. Now, with direction, you're going to think, well, direction from where? So let's say we use bearings. So we've got an arrow going upwards for north. If we're using bearings, then we want the angle from north. So what we want to do is we want to find the angle in a triangle, and then we can add 90 degrees onto it, because we can see above the blue line and up to north, that's uh, 90 degrees. So how do we find that? Well, we're going to use trigonometry. So we can see for our clues, we've got the adjacent would be 90. The opposite would be a negative 10. And the hypotenuse is the, uh, the resultant force, which is always going to be. So we're going to be using soccer tower. It's going to be a TOA question. We're looking for the angle, which is the T. So we've got O and A as our clues. So we're saying that the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite of the adjacent. So that's, so what we need to do to get the angle itself is do uh, the inverse tan to both sides. So it's going to be inverse tan. The opposite was negative 10, and the adjacent was 90. So we can type that into our calculator. So remember to do inverse tan, not normal tan. Remember to open your brackets, 
a negative 10 divided by 90, close brackets, and we're getting for the angle theta negative 6.34 degrees to two decimal places. Now, we only get a negative angle because it's going below the x-axis, so we know we've got the 90 degrees between the i vector and north. It's horizontal, so we'll be 90 degrees up to north. And then we've got the 6.34 degrees that we've just found. So we add these together, we'll get our direction, which is 96.34 degrees to two decimal places. Now, we did the Newtons for the resultant force to one decimal place. Let's do one decimal place here as well. Let's round it. So 96.3 degrees as our direction. Last thing to do, I guess let's just label it. So we've got the resultant force and we've got the direction as a bearing. If we write it as a bearing as well, three figure bearings, we need to have a zero in the hundreds column as well. So we're going to say 096.3 as a bearing. So let's take another look at that with the next question. So we've got two forces acting on an object. So first let's look at the horizontal forces, the negative 40i and the negative 20j. So we want to add these together to see what the total horizontal force on the object is. And that's going to give us negative 60i. So the way that's going to look is it'll look something like this. So we can see the direction it's going from the origin. Then we'll look at the vertical forces. We've got a 30j and a negative 80j. So let's add those together. And that's going to give us a negative 50j. So that's going to be going down from the origin. So it'll look something like this. Now, if we go uh, horizontal first and vertical, it'll look like this. And so the resultant force is going to be going from the origin to then the end of the second vector. So what we want to find is this resultant force, and we know we can find it using Pythagoras' theorem. So that's going to be take two sides and square them, 50 squared and 60 squared, and then square root it for the final answer. We can type that into a calculator. And to one decimal place, we should be getting 78.1 newtons. So that is our resultant force. Now, what this force doesn't do is tell us the direction, because having the horizontal and vertical forces separately does give you an idea of the direction. Because as you see, I've sketched it out, and then I've drawn the purple arrow, so I know I'm going downwards to the left. But if you just write 78.1 as a combined force, then you're not actually going to know what direction to go in. So we need to find the angle. So again, we'll do it as a bearing, go from the origin, we're going north. And so the angle's got to go all the way around like this. Now, what we can do with this is we can just find the angle inside the triangle. And then we know that there's kind of a right angle in between the horizontal force and north. So we can probably work something out to get the total angle from just getting inside the triangle. Now, to work it out, we've got the adjacent, we've got the opposite. So we can use trigonometry. Let's draw a form of triangle. It's going to be tore again. It's always going to be a tore for this, these questions. Looking for the angle. So like the last question, it's going to be 10 to the minus 1 with the opposite over the adjacent, which would be negative 50 over negative 60. So you can go through the full set of you know steps of trigonometry if you want but you should be able to remember that it's just tan to negative one for these. So negative 50 divided by negative 60. Remember that you close your brackets and I'm getting 39.8 degrees to one decimal place for the angle. Now, if I take that and add it to 90 degrees, we're going to get all the bits of the angle that we don't want. So 39.8 plus 90 is going to give us 129.8. So what we need to do there is take it away from 360 to get the other side, which is what we actually want. And that's going to give us 230.2 degrees. And then that's going to be our final answer for the direction as a bearing. So we have a 78.1 Newton force in the direction 230.2. Now instead of i and j vectors, we can also have column vectors. And these just give the same information. So the top number is a horizontal figure and the bottom number is our vertical figure. So we'll just do the same thing. We've got a negative 30 and we've got an 80 horizontally. So we add those together. 
we're going to get 50 newtons. So that's going to be something like this. Then looking at the vertical numbers, we've got 30 and another 30. All together, that's 60. So that'll look something like this. So what we're looking for is the resultant, which is going to be in this direction. So our first step is going to find the magnitude of the combined force. We know it's 50 to the right and 60 up, but what's that going to be combined? It's not going to be 110. So we use Pythagoras theorem. We'll square the two sides to get C squared. Then we're going to square root it to get C, the missing side. Type it into a calculator, and you should get 78.1 newtons to one decimal place. So that was the magnitude. Now we want the direction. So the direction is going to be uh, north from the origin where we started. And we want the angle here. So it looks like it's quite small. Now we can't find that. What we can find is we can find the angle in the triangle. And that should add together with the bearing to give us 90 degrees, because this is a 90 degree angle. So to find the one inside the triangle, we've got the right angles here. So 50 is the adjacent. And 60 is the opposite. So we're going to do 10 to the minus 1, opposite over the adjacent, which is going to be 60 over 50. Type that into a calculator. And that should give us 50.2 degrees to one decimal place. So again, this isn't the angle that we want. We want the angle that is with the right angle makes up what you can see in the diagram. So we're going to do 90 take away 50.2, and that's going to give us 39.8 degrees. And this is quite common, where the angle you can work out in the triangle isn't going to be the whole bearing, and so you've got to be taken away from 90 or 180 or adding on 90 or 180, but you've got to really look at the diagram and really understand, you know, which angles are going to make which. So we see the right angle here, so we know we're working within 90 degrees. Last thing to do is a bearing, so make it three figures with a zero at the start, and perhaps label this bit is our answer, and not the 50.2 50 that's above it. Now, we're not just limited to do this with two forces. See so an example with three forces. We're back to I and J vectors. Let's look at the horizontal ones first. We've got 70, we've got negative 30, and we've got a positive 60. So we can add all of those together, and that's going to give us 100. Then we can look at the vertical ones, negative 30, negative 70, and positive 30, and add those up. So that's negative 100, and then plus 30 will leave us at negative 70. So we have a little sketch of the forces. So we've got 100 newtons, and then we're going down by 70 newtons. So we want to find the resultant force. So we can start off by finding the magnitude, that's the easiest, using Pythagoras theorem. So we've got 100 newtons squared plus the 70 newtons squared. Remember, don't worry about the negative numbers because squaring a negative number is positive anyway. Type it into your calculator. And that should give you 122.1 newtons. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the angle. So we're going to think, well, where's the origin of this? Let's well, start at the blue arrow. That's where we started drawing. This is north. And so the bearing is going to be as you can see, it was labelled. Now, we can only find the angle in the triangle, but we can see there's a right angle above. So we just need to add 90 to our answer for this. So again, you've got to kind of notice we need to add or subtract to get your total bearing. Now, we have the right angle in the triangle, which means that we have the negative 70 is the opposite, and 100 was the adjacent. So we're going to do 10 to the minus 1, opposite of adjacent. Remember, TOA, T-O-A, so we've got the T. Now we've got the O, and now we've got the A. Type that into your calculator. Remember the brackets, it's really important. Your calculator's going to get lost. And we get negative 34.99. So actually, when we round that, it's going to be 35. And that's going to be in degrees. Now again, it's just negative because it's going below the x-axis. If we take the blue line to be the x-axis. So all we need to do now is do 90 plus 35 to get our total bearing, which is going to be 125 degrees. And again, it might not be clear which of our two angles is the final answer, so make sure it's labelled as the direction. We can also have three forces with common vectors. So again, just take one type at a time. Let's look at the horizontal numbers. 
negative 90. Take away 70 will be negative 160. And then add on 20 is going to be negative 140. Then we can look at the horizontal, 70, negative 10 and negative 10. So altogether, that's going to give us a 50. Sketch it what that gives you. So from the origin, we're going to go across 140. And then I'm going to go up 50. And then we can visualize what the resultant is going to look like. So it's going to be going in this direction. It's going to be upwards to the right, or to the left rather. So we can find the magnitude of this first using Pythagoras theorem, 50 squared, 140 squared, square root the answer. So type it into your calculator and you should get 148.7 newtons to one decimal place. Next, we need the direction. So from where we started off is where north's going to go. And we've got to go clockwise. We've got to go all the way around. Now, we can't find that angle. We can find the angle inside the triangle. We can see that's going to make up 190 with the angle that we don't want. So we can find that angle and take away from 360. So first, let's find the angle in the triangle. So it's going to be a TOA question because we don't have the hypotenuse. We've got the adjacent next to both angles and the opposite. So TOA is going to be T. O, A. Type that into our calculator. Again, I'm rushing through trigonometry here, but you can go through it step by step if you're not fully confident with it, as I did with the first example. Now, that's going to give us negative 19.7 to one decimal place. So we're just going to take the positive version of that, 19.7. So if we take that away from 90, that's going to give us the angle above, which is going to be 70.3. And then if we take that away from 360, because we don't actually want that angle, we want the angle all the way around here, which is everything apart from the 70.3. That's going to give us 289.7 degrees for the direction. The big thing to remember here is that a bearing is always measured clockwise. So we can't say it's 70.3 degrees. We can't say it's 19.7. We've got to give the direction from north all the way around to our resultant force. Now we can also find the magnitude and direction of the resultant forces from diagrams as well. To get on a diagram, you're gonna have some horizontal forces and some vertical forces. And what we want is we want the positive direction for horizontal, which is what's going to be going to the right. So 50 take away 40, it's gonna be giving us overall 10 newtons to the right. And then for our vertical forces, one of the upwards one, 70 take away 40, that's going to give us a 30 newtons up altogether. And you know, you can write it all out and do the common additions like I did before, but it should be simple enough that you just do it on the diagram. So let's sketch out what the force is going to look like. So it's going to be 10 across, and it's going to then be 30 up. So the resultant is going to look something like this. We can find the magnitude first, if that's the easiest. So it's just going to be 30 squared plus 10 squared. Pythagoras theorem, a squared plus b squared will give us c squared. Square root it to get c, which is our missing side. Type it into a calculator, and you should get 31.6 newtons to one decimal place. The next step is finding the angle, which is the direction of the vector. So where we started off is a north line, and we want the angle like this. We can't find that angle. We can find the one inside the triangle though, and those two should add up to make 90 degrees. So inside the triangle, we've got the right angle in the triangle. That means that 10 is the adjacent, and 30 is the opposite. So it's gonna be a TOA question, T, O, A. Type that into your calculator, the term 30 divided by 10. Make sure you close the brackets, and I'm getting 71.6 degrees. Now remember that is the angle inside the triangle. We want the one that's outside it that makes 90 degrees with each other. So we're going to do 90, take away 71.6 for our final answer and that gives us 18.4 degrees and it's a bearing between say 0, 1, 8 for our direction. So we've got the direction is 0, 1, 8.4 and we've got the magnitude is 31.6.
So let's try that with the next question. So we're going to look at the horizontal forces first. We've got 40 newtons and 90 newtons. So going to the right, starting off with the 90, take away the 40, we're going 50 newtons to the right. Then we can look at the vertical forces. We've got 30 newtons up and 60 newtons down. So again, starting with upwards, the positive direction, we've got 30 newtons. If we take away the 60, that'll give us negative 30. So that actually means we're going 30 downwards. So again, always remember that you're starting from the positive direction up or to the right, and then you take away the other side. So now we can sketch what we've got. So we're going 50 newtons to the right, and then we're going 30 newtons down. That means that our resultant force is going to be going in this direction. So we can find the magnitude of that first. 50 squared plus 30 squared. Then square root it, type it into your calculator, and you should get 58. 0.3 newtons to one decimal place. So that is the magnitude. Now let's look at the direction. So for the direction, we're going to start from where we started drawing our model. That's north. And so we want this angle. And we can't find that angle, but we can find this one. And then we can add 90 degrees to it. So we need to label our triangle. 50 is going to be the adjacent. It's next to the labeled angle on the right angle at least the right angle that's inside the triangle, and then the 30 is going to be the opposite. So we need to do TOA, T, O, A, and remember that, that 30 should be negative, it's going downwards. So we can type that into our calculator, and we get negative 30, no, it's negative 30.96, so that's actually going to round up to one decimal place to 31. So we find a 31 degree angle, we're going to add the 90 degrees to it, and this will give us our final answer, which is 121 degrees. Put the point zero on it if you want to keep it to one decimal place so you know what it's been rounded to. So that's our direction. And the magnitude was 58.3. So let's do one more of these questions. So again, look at the horizontal forces, 20 newtons and 10 newtons. So the positive direction to the right, it's 10. So then we need to take away the 20. And so altogether, that's going to be a negative 10. Then look at vertical. So that's 60 up and it's 80 down. So again, step in the positive direction, step in the 60, take away the 80. That will leave us with negative 20 newtons. So we we'll start at the origin. We're going to go 10 across and then we're going to go 20 down. So the resultant is going to look something like this. So of course, first step is to find the magnitude, which is the easiest thing to do. Let's use Pythagoras theorem. 10 squared plus 20 squared and square root the answer. That should give you 22.4 newtons to one decimal place. Next, we need to find the direction. We're going to write it as a bearing. So from where we started drawing our diagram, that'll be north. We've got to go clockwise all the way around. Now again, we're not going to be able to find that angle, but we can find the angle inside the triangle. We can find the 90 degrees above it, and then we can take those away from 360 to find the angle that we actually want on the outside here. So we've got the right angle inside the triangle, which means that 10 is the adjacent, 20 is the opposite. So we want to do 10 to the minus 1, negative 20, or negative 10. That's going to give us 63.4 degrees, again, to one decimal place. So we're going to add that onto 90, and then we're going to take that away from 360. Again, this part this is completely by looking at the diagram. This is why it's really important to actually draw the diagram out. So, you know, if you're working with 90s, taking away 180s, or, you know, whatever it is you need to do with the angles. So, 360 taking away 153.4 should give a final answer of 206.6 degrees for the direction. And again, that's only one part of the answer, the other part being the magnitude, which was 22.4 newtons. The next question, this is a reverse question, and we're looking for x and y. And we're actually given the resultant force. It's got a magnitude 22.4 and a bearing 116.6. So what we need to do here is recreate the diagrams that we were drawing before. So firstly, let's have a look at the bearing. So with a bearing, we want a north line, and the bearing is going to be 116.6. So we don't need to be totally accurate with this, but we, at least we need to know that it's going to go more than 90 degrees and less than 180. 
So it's going to be somewhere around about here for it. So our resultant force is going to be going down in this direction. What this means is that we're going to be going downwards in the y direction, and then we're going to be going across in the x direction. So the x direction will be positive. So with this triangle, we know we've got the right angle. What else do we know about it? Well, we can find out the angle at the top of the triangle because that's going to add up to 180 with 116. So 180 take away 116.6 is going to give us 63.4 degrees for that angle. Well, so now we've got an angle of the triangle. Well, that's a clue that we're going to need. We also know the magnitude. The magnitude is 22.4. So we know the length of the hypotenuse. What we want to find uh, the two sides. Now, the green side, this is going to be the adjacent. So it's next to the angle, and it's next to the right angle. And the bottom side is going to be the opposite. So again, we need to find the opposite and the adjacent. So where we're using ta uh, tan before, this time we're going to be using sine and cos. So let's draw the formula triangles for them. So firstly, we're in car. Now, we're looking for the adjacent. So it's going to be the cosine times the hypotenuse. So all we need to do is the cosine of 63.4 multiplied by the hypotenuse 22.4. And that should actually give us the side that we're looking for, the adjacent. So let's try typing it in. So cos, open your brackets, 63.4, close your brackets. It's really important because you don't want to multiply the angle by 22.4. Type in your multiplication, and I'm getting 10 point, and that's going to be 0 0.0 to one decimal place. So we know that the total direction or in the y direction is going to be a negative 10. So we go over to the diagram. This means that y is not going to be negative 10. Y is going to need to be 50 newtons. Because then 50 down and 40 up is going to cancel out to give us a 10 newton downward. Next, we'll do the same thing with the opposite. Let's okay, form a triangle. We're looking for the opposite. So it's going to be sine times the hypotenuse. So it's going to be the sine of 63.4 multiplied by 22.4. And we can type that into our calculator as well. That should give you, again, to one decimal place, 20.0 newtons. So we're getting these kind of whole numbers. It's almost like the question was designed this way. So the total force going to the right is 20 newtons. That means that x must actually be 40 newtons, because then the 60 take away the 40 is going to give the 20. So with the last step with these, you know, it's not that, oh, I found the newtons now, that's the answer. You've got to relate it back to the diagram. And the diagram already has numbers involved, and so you need to be including those numbers. So the total force is 20, then your two forces need to make the 20. And again, the 60 take away the 40 will give you the 20. So now we've got our two answers, x is 40, and y is 50. So now moving on to the last question, and again, it's another reverse question. But remember, you know, you can draw the diagrams using the x and y directions, but you can also draw it using the angle and the magnitude. So again, we have to start off with north. And the bearing, again, not have to draw it accurately, but we know that 154, 153.4, which is the direction being given, that's going to be more than 90, but less than 180. So again, we can draw the resultant force to be somewhere around here. Then we're going to be thinking, well, there's going to be a y direction that's going to be going downwards to get there, and the x direction is going to, have to be positive to get there. So we've got a similar diagram to last time. Now, if we know that the angle we've drawn is 153.4, then the angle of the triangle will be that taken away from 180. Again, not every question will be away from 180. You've got to solve that out from the diagram. So that'll give us 26.6 degrees. We've also got the right angle in there. And we know we're going to be finding the adjacent and the opposite. Now we need one more clue, and that's going to be the magnitude, which is 44.7. And that's going to be the length of the hypotenuse. So now we've got our two clues, so we can work this out. So we're looking for the adjacent and the hypotenuse is the clue. That's going to be a car question. So it's going to be the cos of the angle multiplied by the magnitude of the vector. Again, you can do a form of triangle for this if you want. Just remember, if you're looking for the adjacent, cross it out, C and H next to each other, it's a multiplication. 
So we type this in, and remember the brackets, it's really important, and that should give you 40 newtons. So 40 newtons, this is going to be 40 newtons downwards because you can see the direction of the adjacent. If the 40 newtons are downwards, we've already got 60 downwards on the diagram, so there must be 20 upwards to cancel it out to make it into a 40. So y is going to be equal to 20. Do the same thing with the opposite. So again, looking for the opposite, and the hypotenuse is a clue, O and H. H. It's going to be a so question. We're looking for O, S and H are next to each other. It's going to be multiplication. So it's a sine of 26.6 multiplied by 44.7. Well, the trick is you press the back button in your calculator from your previous calculation, change cost to sin because all the numbers are the same. And that's giving me 20 newtons. And from the diagram, we know that's going to the right. Now that's the diagram we draw. On the diagram we've got the question, it's actually 70 newtons to the right. So I'm going to need 50 newtons in the opposite direction to cancel that down to 20 overall. And now we've got our final answers. X is 50 newtons and Y is 20 newtons. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. 